In this lesson, I'm going to discuss the topic of cross slopes and horizontal curves. I'll present an overview of horizontal curves and then describe a detailed plot with curve information. A straight tangent roadway segment is typically designed with a normal crown for the purpose of providing sufficient drainage of water away from the roadway. The term normal crown is used to describe the type of cross slope and the percentage of the slope. Normal crown has a rooftop shape which peaks in the center of the roadway and falls away from the center line at a typical rate of 2%. Superelevation is the property of a roadway when the slope across, along the entire cross section of the roadway is consistent. Superelevation is typically necessary in horizontal curves to help balance the forces acting on a vehicle and keep the vehicle safely on the roadway. The overhead aerial view of the roadway shown on the left and the simplified roadway alignment is shown on the right. Each end of the roadway is a tangent and they're connected with a horizontal curve. In the horizontal perspective, a roadway is primarily comprised of tangent or straight sections which are smoothly connected by curves. The horizontal curves are used to provide drivers with the transition from one tangent to the next tangent and are typically simple curves which are the arc of a circle. These curves are super elevated to maintain the vehicle's e equilibrium as it passes through the curve, while the tangent roadway section has a normal crown cross slope, which is intended to efficiently drain water from the roadway. The primary elements of a simple curve include the point of intersection, which is the location where the back and forward tangents intersect, the intersecting angle, which is I, which is the deflection angle at the point of intersection, the radius r, which is the length of the line from the center of the circle to the perimeter, the radius describes the sharpness of the curve, the pc, which is the point of curvature, which is the point where the circular curve begins and the highway leaves the tangent, the back tangent is at a right angle to the curve at this point, the pt is the point of tangency, the point of tangency is the point where the circular curve ends and the highway returns to the tangent. The forward tangent is at a right angle to the curve at this point. And delta, the central angle, which is the angle formed by the two radii drawn from the center of the circle to the PC and PT. The central angle is equal in value to the intersecting angle. A spiral curve consists of a simple curve bounded by spiral transitions on each end. The spiral transition provides a smooth transition from the tangent segment that allows for the equilibrium of vehicles to be maintained throughout the curve in a designed manner. On simple curves, drivers tend to drive a spiral transition even if one is not designed into the curve. Geometrically, the spiral has a constantly changing radius and the transition connects the tangent section which has an infinite radius, to the simple curve, which has a fixed radius. The point of intersection remains as the intersection between the back and forward tangents. However, four points of interest are present along the curve due to the presence of the spiral transitions. The TS is the tangent to spiral point, the point where the tangent ends and the first spiral transition begins. The SC point is the spiral to curve point, the point where the spiral transition ends and the simple curve begins. The CS point is the curve to spiral point. This is where the simple curve ends and the second spiral transition begins. And finally, the ST point. This is the spiral to tangent point, the point where the second spiral ends and the tangent begins. The cross section of the pavement must be rotated about the center line or edge line of a highway to create super elevation. Rotation about the edge line of a highway can be necessary when underground utilities or water features could be problematic. Rotating the, the pavement about the edge line ensures that no part of the pavement will go lower in elevation than a section in normal crown. Unlike center line rotation, which can push the inside edge lower than the normal crown section. However, it is more common to have center line rotation, and this discussion and the associated images will focus on center line rotation. The superelevation rate must be selected so that equilibrium is maintained for the vehicles based on the design speed and the radius of the curve. The plot of the outside and inside pavement edges show the relative change in elevation 
from the center line elevation to a point on those lines at any station of interest. In this plot, the center line grade is shown as completely flat, but in practice, there will typically be some longitudinal grade along the center line of the roadway. The center line elevation comes from the vertical profile, and the stationing comes from the horizontal alignment. This figure puts those two elements together, along with showing how the pavement transitions into and out of a curve with a design super elevation and its transitions. The baseline comparison for this drawing is the center line of the roadway. This view is the profile view, as someone would observe the roadway from a position off the edge of the roadway and looking perpendicular to the direction of traffic. A separate line represents the outside edge of pavement throughout the transition. The inside edge of pavement is also represented. In addition to the profile view, this image also ties in the cross-section view at the bottom of the figure. To help relate this figure to what you might see on an actual roadway, let's look at a picture representing the profile view and cross-section view. First, the profile view. This is viewed again from the edge of the roadway looking perpendicular to the traffic, showing both the outside edge of pavement at super elevation, so the outside edge of pavement is higher than the perspective of the viewer and also higher than the center line of the roadway and then the inside edge of pavement is again lower than the center line and of course lower than the outside edge of pavement. Whereas if we look at the cross section view we'll see that consistent super elevation all the way across the road where the outside edge of pavement is on the left side, the inside edge of pavement is on the right side with a consistent cross slope from the outside edge of pavement to the inside edge of pavement. Tangents lead into and out of the curve. Point A signifies the beginning of the transition from normal crown towards design super elevation, and point H is the end of the transition back to normal crown. Prior to point A and after point H, the cross section is in normal crown. At point A, the inside edge of pavement is lower than the center line at a rate of 2% for the width of the section of the road being rotated which is one lane width on a two lane road. The red circles represent the location of this point in profile view and in cross section view. The outside edge of pavement is also lower than the center line at point A. Moving from point A, the outside edge of pavement will begin to rotate upwards while the inside lane remains at the normal crown slope. Point B is the point where the adverse crown is removed. The outside edge of pavement is at the same elevation as the center line. The distance from point A to point B is the tangent runout length. Point B represents the TS point for a spiral curve or the beginning of the superelevation runoff for a simple and spiral curve. For a spiral curve, the superelevation runoff and the spiral length are equal. The inside edge of pavement is still below the center line at the same relative elevation as normal crown because the inside lane has not yet begun to rotate. Point C is the point of reverse crown. The entire pavement width has a cross slope equal to the normal crown slope. The distance from point B to point C is the tangent runout length. The outside edge of pavement has rotated to a point which is above the elevation of the center line at the same magnitude as the inside edge of pavement is below the center line. At point C, the inside begins to rotate for the first time and will rotate at the same rate and magnitude relative to the center line as the outside edge of pavement. Point D is the point at which the design superelevation has been reached and the entire highway width has a cross slope equal to the design superelevation. Point D represents the SC point since the spiral is now complete and the simple arc curve begins. The distance from point B to point D is the superelevation runoff. The outside edge of pavement is now raised above the center line at the design superelevation rate. At point D, the inside edge of pavement is now below the center line at the design superelevation rate. Point E is the final point for the simple curve and the location where the design superelevation will begin to, the transition back towards normal crown. The entire pavement width will rotate simultaneously about the center line. Point E is the CS point, signifying the end of the simple curve and the beginning of the spiral transition for a spiral curve. The inside edge of pavement will rotate along with the outside edge of pavement 
until point F. Point F is the reverse crown point, and beyond this point, similar to point C, and the outside, of outside edge of pavement is still above the center line. After point F, no more rotation of the inside edge of pavement will occur. Similar to point B, point G is the adverse crown remove point and represents the ST point for a spiral curve and the end of the super elevation runoff for a simple curve and spiral curve. The distance from point F to point G is the tangent runout length. The outside edge of pavement is at the same elevation as the center line. The distance from point G to point H is the tangent runout length. The inside edge of pavement is below the center line at the same relative elevation as normal crown and will not undergo any further rotation. As with point A, the outside edge of pavement is at normal crown at point H and is lower than the center line. The inside edge of pavement is also lower than the center line at point H. The overall transition distance from normal crown to design super elevation consists of two lengths, tangent runout and super elevation runoff, as shown in this drawing, with a horizontal curve that turns to the right moving from point A through point H. If a simple curve is used, the transition from normal crown to the design super elevation must still be provided to allow for the safe travel of drivers. The application of the super elevation transition should apply the majority of the transition prior to reaching the point of curvature, and an acceptable practice is to apply two-thirds of the runoff prior to the curve and one-third on the curve.